Hello, and welcome to Panther Sports Zone. I'm Drew Brewer. And I'm Tanaya Walton. Yesterday, the Prairie View A&M softball team dug themselves into a hole early and was unable to come back as they dropped a 16-4-9 conference matchup to, to Stephen F. Austin on Tuesday afternoon. Prairie View A&M opened the game by scoring two runs in the bottom of the first inning with Viviana Figueroa hitting a two RBI homer to left center. SFA scored seven in the top of the second to take to take a seven to two lead. Karina Cisneros hit a homer over the right center fielder's head for the ladies Panthers second homer of the game, making the score seven to three. The score held until the until the fourth when Stephen F. Austin rattled off two consecutive singles and a two RBI homer to increase the 11 to three lead. The Lady Jacks added five more runs in the top of the fifth to take a 16 to three lead. The Lady Panthers continued to struggle on offense, but Figueroa found one last bright spot as she hit a double to right center scoring Natalie McLennan. The Lady Panthers were unable to convert for a final 16 to four score. Up next, the Lady Panthers, they traveled to Lorman, Mississippi for SWAC action Friday, April 22nd against Alcorn State for a three game series. The first pitch is slated for, for 6 p.m. Going into the final day of competition, the men and women's golf team stands at fifth and third overall in competition. Zay Brooks is leading golfer on the men's side, currently sitting fifth in individual standings at one over par. Juniors Radarius Walters and Jordan Stagg follow close behind, both tied for 15th and 18th place. Jaden Thompson and Christian Latham round out the top five for Prairie View. On the women's side, Taylor Harvey leads the way for the Lady Panthers, just three strokes out of first place and tied for fourth. Iman Abraham is the next closest Panther, sitting 13th in the stands. Olivia Tolliver, Olivia Tolliver, Olivia Billups, and Shane White are next three taking spots 15 through 17. Results for the SWAC championship should be out by the end of today. When we come back, we'll go over the SWAC honors and Alabama A&M's new basketball head coach. Don't go anywhere after the break. Stand is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking. Record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Welcome back to Panther Sports Zone. This week... This week's SWAC honors for baseball goes to Prairie View A&M's uh, Braden Johnson and Jackson State's Juan Marwalanda Mar for their outstanding performances dur during this past week of play. Johnson was key for the Prairie View A&M Panthers in assisting them during a series sweep over the Southern Jaguars this past weekend. He tallied a total of six hits and four RBIs during the three-game series. Johnson also contributed a double to go along with a home run while scoring a total four runs during the, during the series. Marolanda pitched a total of 8.1 innings during Jackson State's 8-2 win over the Florida A&M Rattlers this past weekend. He contributed eight strikeouts while allowing just one earned run. Marolanda picked up his fifth win of the season with the Tigers' victory over FAMU. 
Continuing with honors, SWAC Softball awarded Arkansas Pine Bluffs to Mario Jackson and Florida A&M's Chris Dion Beasley as their pitch and hitter of pitcher and hitter of the week. Jackson tailed a total of four hits, five runs, six RBIs, and three home runs this past weekend during Arkansas Pine Bluffs three-game series versus Prairie View A&M. She contributed a home run in all three games of the series versus the Lady Panthers. Jackson currently ranks second in the conference with home runs with eight this season. Beasley was a force on the mound for the Rattlers this past week as she went 2-0. She came in for relief duty in the Rattlers' first game the week versus Jacksonville. Beasley tallied four strikeouts as FAMU rallied to the win the game. During her second game of the week against Alabama A&M Bulldogs, she contributed 10 strikeouts in a complete game shutout. Beasley struck out 14 batters for the week and allowed a batting average of only, zero, of only .094. Alabama A&M has announced the hiring of Olympic and former NBA coach Otis Hoogley Jr. as the Bulldogs' head, head men's basketball coach. A veteran developer of talent at the high school, college professional, international, and Olympic level, Hooley, Hooley is a well-known figure at essentially every level of basketball. He began his college basketball coaching career as the head men's and women's coach at Wallace Community College, Selma, from 1993 to 97, posting a 100 and posting a 135 to 46 record and earned a pair of men's conference championships in a region runner-up finish. No stranger to coaching in Alabama, Hoogley was also a member of the Southeastern Conference uh, member Auburn's women's basketball staff in 2018 to 2019, serving as a consultant head coach. Terry Williams Flor Flanoy, that year the Tigers produced the best record of, the, of her nine-year tenure with the Tigers. Going 22 to 10 as part of the camp circuit, he was associated with the Pete Newell big man camp for more than a decade, which is widely recognized as one of the most influential camps during his, its existence from 1976 to 2011. Coming up next, we will bring on one of the members from the women's track and fields team, Jalen. Elroy. Stay tuned after the break. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Hello and welcome back. Today we have Jalen Elrod with us today. How are you doing today, Jalen? I'm doing good. good morning, I'm happy to be here. It's good to hear. So, Jalen, what made you decide to want to begin running? Well, actually, like my family, they put me in a lot of different sports, right? And so I wasn't really, we didn't know that track was available for young kids. But once I think one of my mom's uh, friends had told us that, you know, club track is available for little five, six, seven-year-olds. And so once they saw I was, you know, fast on the soccer field, basketball court, they were like, okay, we'll put her in that. And so that's pretty much what started off my track career. I was like seven years old, so second grade. Okay. Did you have any family members, parents, friends, for anybody that was did track that helped you, motivate you to become a track runner? Uh, I actually come from a basketball family. Okay. 
So, I mean, they did it occasionally, like middle school, high school, but like no one really loved it like I did. Um, I want to say, like they just kind of did it for fun, but like I was the only one that truly like fell in love with it. Do you recall the first time you you met with Coach Williams? Actually, the first time I met with her um, was actually a few years back. We actually didn't know that we knew each other from years before. Um, I think want to say my dad especially knew her from club basketball because both of uh, my brother and her son played club uh, club ball, and that's pretty much how they got connected. So we didn't even realize it until like four hours into the phone call that we like, wait, we know each other, like, okay. So it kind of, it was like a really genuine conversation. Um, the very first time I met her, you know, I knew that she was uh, very motherly. I could tell that she truly cared about her athletes, uh, regardless of, you know, where they came from and, you know, you know, their background. I knew that like, she would be one that could support me through thick and thin. All right. So with that being said, um, what is the atmosphere like at practice? when you guys are practicing? I want to say it's not as tense as I expected, and I feel like that really helps me. I grow in a more um, free-range type of a atmosphere. I don't want to say, like, I don't like the whole tense, you know, high-anxiety practices that a lot of coaches kind of do in other schools. So I feel like that's a, a really good thing about us. Like, we know how to kind of laugh some things off or. Um, you know, take take a joke here and there, so like things aren't always uh, tense. Cause we we're out there for like three hours, four hours. So you know, at some point, you know, we're gonna actually have to get to know each other, and we truly become like a family. It's really nice. It's your first year here at Prairie View, right? Yes, ma'am. How would you say you're acclimating to campus? Uh, I want to say first semester. Well, first of all, Panther Camp. It, it, it really opened my eyes. I said, wow, we are really, like, coming to PV was when I truly knew about, or I guess came to find out about uh, pride, school pride. Because where I come from, like, I came from a private school, and low-key, we all kind of, like, not, we hated it. We didn't really, like, love the school as much. So coming here... I realized, like, wow, like, everyone has such pride in Prairie View. And, you know, so coming, you know, as a freshman and seeing it from all different, you know, grade levels, even alums, I recognize that, like, this is some place that I could truly be proud of. And I have, I've grown to be, like, very proud of this school and acclimating to it. You know, academically, it's been actually pretty smooth because I came from a private school. So um, it was really, like, that social change that was uh, a big difference. So coming from high school, how would you say, how would, would, how would you say from your perspective of the difference between track from high school to now being here at PV and college? Uh, I want to say for track or just in general? Just in general. Okay, well, I think the biggest thing is accountability. Because in high school, you had like so many different people, teachers, coaches, that were always like, hey, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Make sure you don't turn this in. And now it's like all autonomy. You have to figure out things and you know accommodate to your schedule, um, certain things that you want to do. Even if you want to do some, like, I don't know, some hobbies or you know, extracurriculars, you got to make sure that you can do it on your own. And so you, no one's checking for you. You have to like, you know, kind of be more responsible. That's the biggest thing, I would say. And time management, oh my gosh. I feel like I <laughs> procrastinated so much in the beginning. So that was like the biggest step that I had to take, right. for sure, yeah. So as an athlete, you have to have a pretty strict diet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's rough because it's like from, I want to say like July to, well now May, like that's how long the season is. So it's just like the entire time you're like, man, I can't, I can't eat cake, I can't eat Rice Krispies, I can't eat all the good stuff. So I want to say you have to like kind of find the little things. Like now I want to say what brings me joy is, I don't know, like one of the Jasmine Cafe's like smoothies. I don't know why, or like any type of smoothie. I'll just be like exhilarated just to know like, okay, I had a good meat. I'm going to go get some, get some, like, I don't know, something to treat myself. So I want to say like uh, in the beginning it's like pasta, obviously, because like 
in cross country, when you're a distance runner, you got to eat like a lot of uh, carbs, I guess, because, you know, I really don't know the science behind it, but I know they always were like, oh, carbs, bread, like, you know, so, but then as the season progresses into track, we obviously have to go into more like protein and like healthier, so like fruits, you know, things like that, and veggies, of course. All right. So in high school, you did multiple events. You did high jump, triple jump, distance events. So how do you feel those events helped you become the athlete that you are today? So I want to say it kind of, the way it shaped me was that it made me less, I can't find the words. Um, it, it made me less scared, I want to say, to try new things. And if I don't, you know, obviously get it right the first time, I'm going to keep going. And there's a lot of athletes that, like, do one event or two events, and they get tired. And so, like, I have to kind of psych myself into those, um, like, into, like, the meat, per se. Like, say, because I do the heptathlon now. So I can't just say, like, okay, after these two events, who I'm tired. It's like, no, you're not tired. You have five more events left. So, like, you're just always on it. you got to, like, always give your 100%. 110% sometimes because that 100% won't be enough to, you know, get the right marks. So I think that's the biggest thing for me was to always, like, motivate myself or self-motivate um, in order to, like, keep going through the season and through each meet at a time. So tell me, Jalen, how is it being a part of the SWAC championship winning team? Big SWAC champs. Eh, like, what? Okay, it is honestly the best feeling ever. I really was like so, it was like a relief to finally know that like, man, like all that hard work that we did in that season, in uh, the beginning indoor season, it's all paid off. So honestly, it was just really cool to see, especially both the boys and the girls team, or sorry, men and women's team to uh, actually, you know, get the championship. So it was honestly a real bonding experience, I want to say. Um, it was just, I'm excited to do it again, let's be honest. So we're trying to go for your outdoor slack again. All right. So, you know, coming into PV, already a championship as it is, and now just becoming another champion with the indoor, and now moving on to the outdoor, how would you say what goes through your head when you're out there running, doing your events? What goes through my head? Um... What honestly goes in my head is I hear my coach's words and it's always, um, I can kind of hear like them critiquing me on everything. So I'm like, if I get out the blocks and I don't get out right, I'm like, and they're gonna say, okay, push, push, push. Like anything to kind of make up for something that I did wrong. Or if, you know, I'm, you know, going through it and I'm actually doing good, I'm gonna say, okay, I keep, keep attacking. Like say if I'm doing hurdles, like I would say attack, 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 you know, because I know I'm, you know, going in a good direction. Um, but other than that, like, honestly, I feel like it's just always been a little bit of, obviously, self-motivation for myself because I know, like, if I see that clock, I'm like, I got to get there in, you know, three seconds, four seconds, whatever it may be, to, you know, actually get to my goals. Yeah. So what goals do you have coming up for this new outdoor season? That's a good segue. <laughs> um, my goals for this season, honestly, I want to win the heptathlon. It's going to be, you know, obviously really tough because there's, uh, uh, especially this one girl from another school in our uh, conference that's supposed to be really good. But, you know, I'm not really too shy about, you know, uh, I'm not going to shy away from something just because, you know, they're older, or just because I'm a freshman. Um, so I've always, you know, tried to push myself in each event. That's obviously like the best, the biggest goal for me, um, because I'm doing so many of them. So um, I know like the four by four is like the very last event, and like I'm trying to like get my head right. Like no, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm tired. Like my legs shaking on the line. Like I'm gonna be like, no, I'm gonna keep pushing through. And I, I know my team relies on me for these points and for these times. So you know, I'm gonna come through for them and for myself. Because right. I know I can do it. And, you know, one thing I will say is you guys now being the number one, taking over Alabama State that was number one at first. Mm -hmm. So now you got a lot of teams coming for y'all to, like, really come and see if you guys are still that championship mindset. So 
especially with fam you coming in and Bethune Cookman, how does that level of added competition, knowing that you have a target on your back, come to when it comes to your events? It's actually crazy because I've always been used to having some type of, you know, camaraderie, some type of competitiveness when it comes to other schools. So that's actually just adding fuel to the fire um, for me, especially um, for my individuals. You know, I'm always here to motivate my teammates, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be like the one that's going to like hold it down for myself if I can. And I'll always try to like, you know, motivate them like, hey, y'all, like they coming for us. Like we got to have our A game and more because they're going to be coming, um, you know, they're going to be coming after us in any event as possible that they can, you know, get some points in. So that's like the biggest thing for sure. So now you have anything else to say? I just want to say best of luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for coming in and oh, yeah, thank talking you for with having us. Me. You know, anytime we love to have you guys come out here and we would love for Panthers at home to come and support the track team as they go on to the outdoor season and bring in that new championship that we hope that we know that they're going to come in and handle. Well, thank you today. That's all for Panther Sports Zone today. Make sure you tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Panther Sports News and more information around the SWAC. And also, there will also be a, don't forget about the spring game for football on this Saturday at 4 p.m. in the Panther Stadium as the purple and gold scrimmage will go on between the Panther football team. Once again, I'm Drew Brewer. And I'm Tanaya Walton. And we're signing out.